We're going to speak to the president of Fencing West and Cape, Patrick Collins. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Um, I think it's the first time that we've got you on the show. Um, but of course, everybody knows what fencing is. Uh, I suppose it uh, goes back to the days of sword fighting. It does. It, it's been with us for centuries. Centuries. It's one of the um, of four sports that have been in the modern, uh, pentath uh, modern Olympics since it uh, started. So it goes back a long way. But fencing has, of course, got different disciplines. I mean, it's not just sword fighting. You've got uh, epee and explain it to us. There are three weapons in uh, fencing. There's the epée, which is the largest of the weapons. Uh, the one that in South Africa we're particularly good at. Then there's foil and there's sabre. Uh, they are lighter weapons. Uh, the foil and the epée are you stab at a point, and the sabre is a slashing weapon. And that's uh, when, when, when generally when we see it on TV, which is the place that I think most people probably watch fencing is. Um, it, it's, it's, it looks very electronic. We see people with mar uh, gear on and they've got an electric cord sure. behind them, which I'm assuming is not a full-on electric cord, but some sort of battery-operated mechanism. Um, how, how does it work from a technical perspective? The, um, the whole thing is, is electric. And, and it's that cord, you see that cable that you see behind the fencer, that is starting to disappear. We're tending to go wireless these days. Right. Um, so you'll see a little box attached to the back of their mask or to the back of their uh, waist. And how it works is that when your weapon strikes the, um, your opponent, it uh, closes the circuit and you score the point. It is as simple as that. In the, um, in the foil and in the epee, you press a point at the end, and in the saber, anything along the blade counts. Um, anywhere you hit, it will register. Is it dangerous? No, no, it's actually one of the safest sports around. You wear a lot of protective equipment, um, and it is a blunt point, and it is actually really safe. Uh, it's one of the safest Olympic sports, um, which is, you know, sword fighting, but safe. Sword, sword fighting, but safe. Mm. Um, how are we doing in South Africa? How are we doing from a fencing perspective? We, we punch it more. We, we fence above our weight category. Um, we have one, especially in the Western Cape. Uh, we have one fencer, Giselle Vicatus, who's a foilist. She fences out of UCT, and she's still in the running for the Olympics. Um, her qualification event uh, was postponed with everything else. Yeah. Uh, so we're waiting for that to come back. And the International Fencing Federation has said that they will still count uh, that competition. So Giselle's in with a chance. Uh, and this will be the African Zonals. Um, so when they come back, she's in the running. And then in Epe, we have some remarkable talent coming through. We have two twin sisters from Kailicha, uh, the Antola twins, Pakam and Pumza. And um, Pumza is currently ranked fifth in Africa. Pakam is ranked ninth. And they are the backbone of the under-20 women's Epe team, uh, which is ranked second. And what a lot of people don't know, that Africa is a really strong fencing continent. There are over 33 um, different countries that fence. And North Africa um, is incredibly strong. When you fence in the senior teams, you fence against two Olympic medal winners from Egypt or from Tunisia. So um, no slouches there. And, and the girls are doing very well. They've just come back from the uh, Junior African Championships, the under 20, where their team won silver, which was a, a great send off because that was their last under 20 African competition. And they're now going to the senior circuit. And we. Um, we've got a lot of hope for them. They, um, one thing about fencing is you can compete until you are in your mid-30s. Currently in women's FA, the, of the top five international fencers, top five ranked, yeah. three of them are in their mid-30s. Uh, these girls are 19 years old. So we've got a long way to go with them and they've got great potential. And from a development perspective, I mean, um, at what sort of age do the kids start, um, start fencing? Oh, uh, in South Africa, they tend to start around about 11, 12 uh, overseas, they start younger. Right. Um, but that's where the age they start around yeah. here. And uh, we, we've got a good footprint. I mean, in the, in the Western Cape, uh, we, we're the largest of the provinces. Uh, we've got clubs in uh, Kailicha, we've got one in Delft, we've got one in uh, Ottery. So uh, we're well spread out. Yeah, I was, I was looking at the, at the fencing, SA Fencer website earlier mm. on, and I was surprised to see just how many clubs you have in the Western Cape. Um, and um, I mean, that's quite impressive. I mean, you've got a couple of schools, 
but you've also mm-hmm. got a number of, of clubs like Crystal House and False Bay and Kailicha, Langa, mm. Peninsula. So, you know, there, it, it certainly looks like you've got, you've got a, 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 like you say, a big footprint. It can't be hard for people to join a club. Uh, no. I mean, uh, one of the things, the challenges that we've got to get right is we've got to market it better. Uh, everybody knows about fencing. Everybody knows about the sword fighting. Uh, yeah, they've just yeah. got to just tell them that it's available in the Western Cape. It's available in South Africa. And, um, you know, we... We're going to work on that, and I think when we come out of the lockdown, we're going to put a lot of effort into growing the sport. We're going to lose a lot more of the social media and, and get out to people. Yeah. And uh, there's a, you know, a joke going around within fencing. It's the perfect sport for the coronavirus. We all wear masks. We wear gloves. And if anybody comes close within six foot to you, you stab them. So. <laughs> yeah. I suppose we have to find the lighter side on these things. As we, we do. We're under very we difficult times at the moment. And I mean, Absolutely. I take my... I take my hat off to you guys for for staying active. How do we? How do the fencers train at home? How do they practice at home? Um, uh, well, we, we it sort of breaks down into two parts or three parts, four parts actually. We, we've got the fitness, uh, the run on programs, yeah. body weight program space at home, uh, their footwork and their blade work. Uh, we have drills that they run through. For the blade work, they use lunging pads, which is basically a a padded um, scoring device against the wall or a fencing dummy. Uh, And a lot of fencing is very technical. So it's a great opportunity for them to really perfect their technique and commit it to muscle memory. Um, And footwork is incredibly important. You know, in some parts of the world, people do two years of footwork before they touch a blade. So we have an opportunity now to work on footwork. And then obviously the mental game. What, so sorry, carry on. You said there were four components. Uh, and the fourth component is the mental game. Uh, we, we look a lot into mindfulness. Getting people into the zone is very important for us. So we do a lot of that work. Yeah. Uh, and then tactical analysis, uh, watching videos with them and getting their input on, on how the bout went and what they could have done better and where they think mistakes were. So we, we're missing being in training, but we're certainly using the opportunity yeah. to yeah. get ourselves going. A last question. Um, uh, well, the second last question, in fact, um, the, uh, how, how difficult is it to get involved in fencing? What do you need? Do you, and obviously fencing clothes, you have to get them mm. at a special venue. And I know you guys wear a special outfit, but for the average person in the street who wants to start fencing, what do they need to do? You just need to find a club and pitch up there. All the clubs have spare equipment, club equipment, masks, uh, the jackets, the plastrons, those are the protective clothing, um, the weapons as well. And what we do is people come, they fence with us, and if they enjoy it, then they can start building their kit over time. It, it has to be imported. It's all specially made. It's all got huge safety precautions. Basically, a fencing yeah. jacket is like a lightly woven bulletproof vest. Right. Um, so we, we import that, but really all the clubs have got the equipment. So go there, join the club, get private lessons, get group lessons, see if you like it, and then start building from there. Patrick, that's been great chatting with you. Um, I think we're looking forward to having more conversations like this, uh, maybe showcasing some of your athletes in the Western Cape uh, and uh, following their, their progress, even if they are training at home. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and yeah, best of luck to you guys out there. And, and even to you, with swords and things, I have to say, stay safe. Okay, thank you very much, and thanks for having me on board. Appreciate it. Right, folks, Patrick Collins, of course, uh, president of Western Cape Fencing. Um, Fascinating stuff, uh, fencing in the Western Cape.